What up, it's your boy Freddy Ferocious back at it again for another Bombing Science video tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about color theory and fills. This is kind of where you put everything that we've learned so far all together. From flares, to dots, to drips, to clean lines, everything is going to be put into practice right now. Now, when we're talking about color theory, this kind of comes at the most basic of levels. It's going to be things that we think about in our everyday life from various color tones and shades and things that we learned from grade school and in high school art class. Now, what we're going to do in order to put this all together is we're going to start off with a simple letter. We've done the A in the last video, so we're going to do an A again because an A has a lot of movement, action, and different elements to it to become a really, really sick piece. So let me start off with the letter A again, and we'll go into various color techniques. Now if you notice the ways, sprayed this A. It's a little bit different than how I did it before because I've added a little bit more style, a little bit more flair, and a little bit more pizzazz. But this all keeps within the same letter structure line that we were talking about earlier on. I have the letters coming over here to the left and to the right with the middle bar going through. Now we've added some little bit of differences in the size and the proportion, but they still all make sense in the way that they're supposed to. These lines are curved, but they follow each other here. Same with here, and then just a simple straight line going along the middle. Now, what we're going to do is start off with a basic gradient. Gradients are one of the most simple but effective ways of doing color theory correctly and fills looking really, really tight. Now, there's a number of ways you can do it. I generally like to choose it in the same tonality. But again, this is not a rule. You can do fades coming in all different directions and all different color schemes and all different color tones. But for me and for this purpose, we're gonna use the same tones in different shades, going from red to orange to yellow, keeping it simple. And then we're also gonna go dark to lightest in three equal parts. Again, this doesn't mean you have to use this as a rule of thumb and have to do this every single time. I just like to do it because I'm comfortable with it and you do what's comfortable for you. So in this case, I'm gonna start off with the yellow at the bottom, orange in the middle, and red at the top. Let's get to spraying. Now if you notice how I originally painted this, there was lines going in and over each other like we had on the original A from last time. Bars going over one another and them looking a little bit shoddy. But this is the beautiful part about the fill, is it cleans up everything that you didn't want and it covers it up in a way that no one ever would have known it existed unless you want it to. Now, I've tried to do this in more or less three equal parts going from the yellow to the orange to the red. Now I'm going to try and fade downward because this is something I'm comfortable with. You guys can fade it in any way that you feel comfortable with. Now when you're fading it downward, similar to the way that we talked about, with some of the things that you may not want to do in your can control, and that is direct away from the wall. Going downward on a stream that's going downward away from the wall. This helps the paint fall in a sort of a natural pattern. And because I'm going from a light to middle to dark fade, I actually want it to go downward, so fade over top of each other. I will start from the bottom, going upward. So, with the yellow being filled in, I'm going to take the orange, fade that down, and I'm going to take the red and fade down, that down into the orange.
Now you notice how I got my spade going down. I was in a very clean and smart direction. I was in a very tight b-boy stance, a low center of gravity, and I was really, really ready to kind of get right in there tight with the angle of the nozzle going almost directly down or almost in a way at a 45 degree angle so it looks as if it bounced off the wall and then falls in the correct way. Now it's not completely three levels perfectly the way I wanted it, but that's no matter because it doesn't really matter how you do it if you feel comfortable and you think it looks good. This is all left to, all up to the writer's decision. Now, this isn't, this is more than just one color going over one another, even though that you think so because we've only used three. It's actually a lot more complex than that because spray paint, unlike any other paint, interacts with each other differently. It comes out of the can essentially in little, little dots, especially when you hold it further out. That's what gives you that spray or that fade or the overspray as we notice here, which as I said earlier on, seems to be something we don't want, but we're gonna clean up as we get through it. And definitely clean it up once we get the outline going on. So, if you notice these various patterns and the little dots, as I just mentioned earlier on, are going over one another, this adds certain levels of dimension that you normally don't get with other types of materials, such as brushes using oil or acrylic. When you're using oil or acrylic, you have to blend them in over and over with one another, or sometimes you have to have little cups or, or, or caps of different shades in order to blend them in as well as you possibly want. And this, with only a couple simple strokes of the arm, you're getting a whole range of colors and gradient that you normally wouldn't get. Now, we kind of are looking at this and saying that's pretty good, but we definitely want to take it a little bit further. So we're going to add some extra funk or flavor to it that is going to be really, really important. I'm taking this up to the next level from being just a straight letter to a real burner. Now, a lot of people like to do various sorts of style. I personally like to do a lot of graphic work. Some people like to do more rendered work, but in this case, we're gonna intermix a little bit of the both. So I'm gonna grab some pink, add some little doodads, and then we're gonna get in with some of the other orange and put some little lines and dots and see how that goes. Now as you can see, I added some pink and some other orange to give it a little bit more depth than just your simple gradient fade. This really helps pop it out and give the letters a different sort of dimension than you normally would get. If you also notice, I use iron lac over top of the Belton or Molotow cans. This doesn't matter. If you notice that you have something in a different color range of a different type of can, don't be afraid to use it and try it. It's gonna really, really work out. Definitely if you don't have the color that you're looking for on the certain can. Now, if you notice what we've done here, it's kind of kept it in a lighter range. Even though we've got the dark color at the top and the lightest color at the bottom, it's still in its relatively lighter or neutral sort of context. In which case, normally the rule of thumb is trying to put a contrasting color over top for the outline. That being said, we're going to try and use a black to go over top of this, clean up some of the unwanted lines, and really, really kind of give it that contrast to the letters that normally you wouldn't get if you did something in a more neutral or similar sort of tone. So let me grab a black and we'll move forward from there. So now I've grabbed my can of black and I'm ready to outline. But I'm going to actually dial back a little bit and talk to you about the color scheme that I just picked. I've actually based this color scheme off of a simple color chart or color wheel that we usually learn in grade school or high school art class. I'm going to take a look at it right now. So I've actually picked my colors based on the color wheel or generic color chart, which is actually available at Bombing Science for free. You can get, email them and get one of these totally free of charge, e mailed right to your door. Now, if you notice within the color chart, we've got the different yellows and oranges and reds, and they all go perfectly together, including some of the pinks as well. Hence why I picked 
oranges, yellows, reds, and pinks. Furthermore, we've got the greens over here, which are complementary colors, which would make for great accent pieces, especially in the background or the force field. But we'll talk about that in a future video. Furthermore, you're definitely not going to want to put one of these weird neutral colors like grays within one of that. Not to say you can't, as with anything, you can do what it is you feel like, but just a rule of thumb, it might look a little bit odd. So let's get to the outline portion. Okay, now I got my outline ready to go. I decided to use a black. That's because that's very, very contrasting in words the neutral color scheme that I've picked. So this is gonna go over it very, very well. And that goes for all sorts of different types of color schemes in this neutral palette, like blues, greens, purples, whatever. The fact of the matter is, it's a light enough scheme that with the contrasting outline over top, it really shines through the letters. So let's get to the outlining portion and go from there. Now, if you notice from my outline, I decided to go a little bit fatter than the average person was. That's also because I'm using a New York fat, and that comes out a little bit fatter or more medium. And I generally like that in my style preference because I tend to go bigger, bolder, and a lot more graphic and fat. But this, again, is all up to the writer's stylistic choice. And there's no wrong answers here. Now, if you notice, I also had a little bit of drips going on here, and there's kind of one sneaking out at the bottom. We're gonna clean it up with one more quick little line, but there's also other ways of cleaning that stuff up, which we'll talk about in a future video. Now, if you notice, I actually tried to fix up more than just the drip that I originally saw because I noticed there was things that I didn't like about it and that was just in my own personal style. Maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't notice it. That's really only up to the artist's discretion themselves. But what I did was thicken up the lines a little bit, move forward, but the most important element to it is the black going over top of the red, orange, yellows, pinks, and various shades is that it really, really helps bring the letter out and show you what the letter truly is instead of just being a big mulch of color. All right, here we are gonna add another dimension to the piece that's gonna be a really, really solid way of bringing it all together and adding that certain little flair that we really want. Those are the highlights. The highlights are something that give those letters that extra bit of jump that you can't really get without that extra color. And in this case, we're gonna do it in the white. The white is a really, really solid way of making these neutral colors pop off of the dark letter, almost giving them an either 3D or beveled look, sometimes even rounded if they're off the line. We're going to go on the line for this case just because the guide will help us get the line correctly. And on the line means we're going to stay more or less on our outline directly so that it can tell us exactly where this needs to go. Off the line is when you're inset a little bit and it gives it a bit more of a rounded or bald effect. But let's try to do an on-the-line one, just so you get what I'm talking about. Okay, now we've just added the highlights, which is giving a really, really nice extra dimension to the letters that we're looking for. This time, I did some on-the-line highlights, meaning we put the white attached to the black outline, giving it that bevel effect that we really, really want. Now, what's important to keep in mind is understanding exactly wh where this is supposed to go and keeping it consistent along the letter. That means we're gonna follow a certain light source or a light path. That's coming from the top over, meaning on this side to the right, is gonna be where all the highlights are following the outline. So we've got it on the top, and then on the right portion of this letter, and on the right side of this portion, 
and the top side of this portion and the right side of this portion. That means that consistently throughout the letter or any letter that you're gonna use in your piece, you're gonna have it going on the top and the right side. Now this is just a general rule of thumb to make it a concise and a proper way of doing the highlights, though some people try to venture past that in using their own specific style. Now I've been using neutral colors and the black and white to give it that extra pop on this entire letter that I'm working on right now. And the general rule of thumb is doing it like this just to ensure a pretty classic and average style to making sure that your piece looks good almost at any time. Now if you're a bomber, you're likely going to want to use a lot of similar colors because you're going to be painting a lot and over and over again. This oftentimes includes chrome, black, and white. This ensures that you've got a variety of different abilities of using chrome for the fill, white a highlight, and black outline to kind of bust through and really make anything special that you paint. Furthermore, this is just a regular style piece using the neutral colors and the black and white to give it that extra pop. But you can invert this too by using dark colors in the fill, a white outline, and then a dark inline, or maybe no inlines at all. That's really up to you, and it's really, really important that you just go out and have fun and do whatever you think is right. So if you notice, I've actually painted on a corrugated surface. Now this happens from time to time because you don't always get to choose what surface you paint on. It just happens to be that this is going to be a type of wall you're going to paint, so it's going to be corrugated. A lot of times when you paint trains, they're going to be corrugated. And also furthermore from that, there's going to be wood, there's going to be virgin concrete. Virgin concrete means concrete that's never been touched before. This oftentimes means that the paint is going to seep in. So it's usually important to either buff where you want to paint or buff all around the wall so that your paint will take there really well. Similar to that is the wood. Wood really, really absorbs paint. It's very, very porous and it's not as dense material as concrete or brick. So always keep in mind, you might want a base layer before you add paint to all of that.